You can't break my soul. 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 Donna. Everybody. Everybody. You know, I really don't know the words. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. What's going on, y'all? It's Malika with Answering the Inner Call. I hope that the audio is not terrible. I'm in my car right now and just decided to record this one right at this particular moment. So hopefully it's usable and not too distracting. It's a rainy day in this city. Anyway, as the song hopefully indicated, I'm going to be talking about Beyonce. I went to see the Renaissance film this weekend and it was... It was like my inner child. I wanted some joy. And, you know, my inner child is all about the fashions and beauty and magic. And so from the trailer, I was just like, oh, okay. I think this will be like, be my soul and give me that joy that I wanted to, to feel. And I was, first of all, the film, you can find other commentary on the film. Like, I'm going to take a different route. It was amazing, like visually engaging. Of course, the costumes were awesome. It was inspiring to see the stories and some of the other people that were supporting this vision she was carrying out. I thought, honey, from social media, I thought Blue was dancing in every number and saw that she wasn't. But, you know, to see her growth, and Blue talking about her journey and and dancing with her mom. Like it was just, there were so many good attributes and so many yummy parts to it. And yet I found myself like yawning during the film. And I'm like, why am I not feeling the joy? It was just holding in the back of my mind. And of course, some of the songs, it was a a really uh, small audience where I went to see it. And, you know, there's some songs we were singing and, you know, some people in the audience were co-signing on things. So the engagement was there. My willingness was there. And I was just noticing, like, why am I not feeling joy? And I really had to sit with myself on this. And, oh, I want to say, when, whoa, boo. One of the things that I also loved Ooh, child, these drivers out here. One of the things I also loved, and maybe this, I think this is what was connected to some of it for me, was when she kept it 100 talking about, as a Black woman, how they try her and how much effort and energy it takes to basically to navigate and to supersede, override all the resistance that she's getting. And so when I was, when she, when she has ideas and people, you know, on the team saying, well, I don't know if we can do that. And, you know, she had to do research herself and say, you know, I found the camera that can do exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, I say that to say that when I was, and I'm still unpacking it, like, why didn't I feel the joy? And what I resonated with or what came up for me about not feeling the joy is recognizing I told a coach of mine recently how I am wired for excellence and how part of the the coach is white part of the white privilege and the male privilege is that people give you the benefit of the doubt of competence and part of the challenge with unconscious bias And not being a part of that type of privilege is that people challenge you or assume incompetence or inadequacy in some way. And that's not everybody, but just in the workplace, I know so many Black women, myself included, that dealt and had to put in a lot of energy to do simple things because of that level of resistance of, of leadership, of lack of confidence in abilities, having nothing to do with intelligence and aptitude and experience, but having to do simply because of what the body looks like 
And this goes back to and ties into an earlier episode that I talked about with our soul curriculum and liking it, likening it to traffic on the freeway, which is perfect because that's exactly what I'm experiencing right now. And how our experiences are shaped by a myriad of things, environment, you know, some of the things are shared and some of the things are different. And one of the things that are shared, like depending on, let's say everybody who's driving a a Toyota, a specific model of Toyota, a specific year, on some level, because their car has the same features, because it's the same model, they have shared experiences just based on the aesthetic of them being in the same car. Similarly, there are certain tribes that we're in where we have shared experiences. And this is broad stroke, right? We're not like a monolithic people, but there are shared experiences. If your soul is in the physical shell of a black woman, let's say, you're, you have shared experiences, not identical, but some shared experiences with other black women. And part of that is because of the mindset of patriarchy, which is spread not just in this country, but all across the world, as well as racism and all the isms, right? Which are beliefs that people have about other people and their aptitudes and qualities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I learned about this first in college. I went to a historically black all-female college, shout out Spelman, and they had a curriculum that was required one year designed specifically for their target audience and student body, black women. And the course was designed and explored this very thing. And the takeaway, I would say on a high level from this one year course is because of the things that I've talked about, I'll call them the isms that uh, a woman of African descent in Brazil has some overlap and similarities in her experiences as I do as a woman of African descent in America because of you know what one, one uh, paper or book we read called The Matrix of Domination. So I say that because in watching this film and seeing how hard Beyonce works, I saw myself and I saw so many other ambitious Black women that I know that aspire for excellence, that aspire for mastery. And I don't know if we give ourselves as much grace. Like some of the hard work is necessary to thrive and to reach those levels that we aspire. And I wonder how much is self-imposed. Like she shared uh, that she had a surgery, like a very short period of time leading up to the concert. And while she rehearsed in, in flats for the first time, she had them heels on, honey, was suited and booted during every performance that I saw. And while the costumes and everything were beautiful, I was just like, B, do you know that, you know, your stands and everybody would still love and support you if you allowed yourself to wear flats. And those flats probably would have been amazing because looking at all the other costumes, like I know that a team could have pulled together something that would have been amazing. So it's just like, where has things been hard for us as a people in general? And where have we imposed this standard upon ourselves in ways that may not be so kind and that maybe others would give us more slack on. And if they don't, I want to say <laughs> the F word, but I'm not right now. That's like not a word I use very often. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just going to say, and if, 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 they, if they don't give you that grace, that's okay. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, can we, does it have to be so hard? Does it have to be so hard? Does it have to be, I don't want to call it a struggle because I don't feel like she was struggling and she has like, you know, don't get it twisted. She has a chef, she has a whole team and has a lot of support. But yet I still saw that same overlap that I have experienced personally and so many others where we're working too damn hard. 
just to achieve as much. Like I haven't seen the Taylor Swift concert, but you know, I'm willing to put put money on that as far as the the aesthetics, as far as the costumes, as far as the dancing, like I'm willing to bet money that it's not anywhere near the production value. And no offense to Taylor Swift, but I'm just mentioning her because these are, you know, two really big tours, two really strong female artists that have been in the game a long time, that have received awards, that just had tours, and that have films out. And it's like this whole thing still of a Black woman working so freaking hard to hopefully get as much, maybe half as much, when we're talking at their level, right? I think I heard uh, Taylor made 91 million in her box office her first weekend. I think Beyonce, she broke all records for it being the first weekend in December, but I think she got 21 million. So it's just like, gosh, sis was working hard and 21 million, right? But compared to her contemporary, it's still like not equal. And so I was just, I just realized that that drive, that exhaustion, that relentlessness, that desire for excellence, like all of those things. And I think why I didn't experience joy was just that reminder and seeing of how life has been for me. Of course, not touring or anything, but just that same energy, that same effort that same like dealing with resistance and not giving up and and how that you know when we if you think about it dealing with that level of resistance in a society from a soul perspective is like lifting weights right like if you only have a little bit of resistance when you're lifting weights and you do it over time you're not going to be as strong as somebody who's lifting everything else being equal, heavier weights and doing it longer over time. So from a soul perspective, there is so much richness and depth to dealing with the challenges and the resistance that we can deal with, depending on what your demographic is. But we all have challenges and issues. But I'm speaking specifically now to Black women So that level of resistance has definitely molded my character and made me a very multifaceted, compassionate, internally strong. And strong, you know, some people have mixed feelings about that word, especially with Black women. I'm also, I also can be soft. Like that is part of my strength. But looking at that, it's like, how much have I imposed on myself? Where can I be kinder? And I'm aware of a desire now to do it differently. Can I manifest my heart's desires in a kinder and gentler way? Can I, can I experience all this wonderfulness of abundance and success without it also having to come at such a great personal cost? And that's what I want for myself. And also that's what I, I want and pray for whenever she's ready. If she ever wants that also for Beyonce, right? Like sis, you don't have to work so hard. You paid your dues. And I know she said she enjoyed it, but as an empath, I didn't feel the joy watching that. And it's just a exploration and an opportunity. Like you know, can I, can I do this differently? Can I do this another way? And if memory serves me correctly, I haven't, you know, looked up different facets of the animal kingdom in some time, but my understanding of, of the queen bee in the hive is that everybody caters to her. She doesn't work that hard. I think she just lays the eggs and all the young, the young uh, bees and all that other stuff. Well, you know, look out, Jay-Z. But, you know, they, I think she, they, um, 
do everything for her, right? And bring her things. And then she has a couple bees that she mates with and lays the eggs. But that's like her main thing. And everything else is, is of course, centered around her, just like the, the production was centered around Beyonce. But I don't think that the queen bee in the hive, and I'm talking about now literally the insects, work that hard. And so that is my prayer and hope for her because the other thing is when we set such a high bar for ourselves and each other, it makes me think about Lauren Hill and how she was saying how she had this really grand production. And at some point it's like you have to keep one upping yourself, right? People are always gonna compare you against you. And it's just like the heavy lifting of all the dynamics and complexities. And it's like, do you have to keep building on that every single time and topping yourself? That can also lead to more exhaustion. And I had a, a new person I'm getting to know, like a new friend. She's super cool. She uh, definitely is a Beyonce stan. And I was so glad that I asked her if she wanted to meet me at the theater because she was like all giggles and zeal. And she shared that at the opening of the concert, because she went to see her in person, when Beyonce just like sang a slow song, I think it was Dangerously in Love, she said she cried at the opening. And I think that's what I want to wrap all this up with is that, yes, the costumes are fun and all the dancing and the, you know, all of that. Is, but what touched her heart the most wasn't all the shimmery and the shy, you know, all the, the bling and the, and the, uh, pyro and any of that stuff, right? The smoke, the fan, it wasn't any of that. It was Beyonce singing from her heart on that stage, just standing there. And I think that this is a powerful reminder that we don't have to do all that, that just who we are as we are and the simplicity sometimes of who we are and as we are is what really touches people the most. And so that is an anchor for myself and recognizing like, sis, it's time. There's another way. And holding that for anyone else that this resonates with, whether you're a black woman or not, because I think that this go, 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 go is, is part of the American culture that is really relentless in some ways, but also helpful for people and others if you don't want to deal with your stuff. You can always could be busy. You can always be busy enough to not have to face yourself and face your shit. So there's that if you want to go that route. But, you know, signing off is just like, as you are, you are enough. And I also want to say and call out another lie. And that lie, going back to the whole curriculum and earth school and soul school, you know, the lie is that your inner, the spirit in you, your inner potential is based on your outer physical expression, meaning your race, your gender, your, you know, where you're born, like all those things as if your potentiality and the spirit is you in you is different or not in the same magnitude as somebody else. That's the lie. It's like, you know, in, in the Bible, it's like the sun, it says God uh, shines on the just and the unjust. God is no respecter of persons, which also then means is that we all inside are made up of the same stuff, right? The joke is, and the matrix is, is that the outer part somehow has a bearing of what your inner aptitude is. It's not true, it's malarkey. And it took me some time to learn that, but who? that's why I love spirituality and, and religions that really support people in their freedom and the truth. And that's why most of the greatest revolutionaries come from a foundation of some type of spiritual or religious practice because they know that the ways of the world are not in alignment with the truth of who we really are as children of God. And they come back to themselves and to their power. 
So with that, I'm going to sign off for now. But if you haven't seen the film, check it out. It's amazing. It's amazing for all the reasons and more that I didn't get to. And I hope this finds you well. I hope this finds you rested. And I hope this, hmm, I hope our time together has given you some food for thought on something, anything that you needed to hear at this particular moment, at this particular time. Many blessings, much love. Until the next time, peace.